And welcome to the Vanu Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to the coercion of the state and the servile society. I'm your host, Shane, coming to you from the Free Republic of Pasnia, the self liberator's paradise. Uh, that website is pasnia.com. That's P-A-Z-N-I-A dot com. There you can learn all about this Pasnia Second Realm Network that we're building, and you can get involved by becoming a stakeholder uh, if you like what you see. In essence, we're building a decentralized network of self-sufficient, permanent, autonomous zones founded upon peace, truth, and voluntarism, uh, rather than the coercion, deception, rampant in the first realm, the Servile Society. Again, that website is paznia.com, P-A-Z-N-I-A.com. And please make sure to join our Committee of Correspondence chat on Telegram. Uh, that's the best place to start building your reputation. Uh, the following is an article by Sky Diorios and Natalie Hall, found in Vanu Life Number 1. May 1971, originally condensed from Libertarian Connection, August 26th, 1970, which I will note, uh, the connection is still around today. Uh, thank you, uh, Erwin Strauss. Um, and republished here on the Vani Podcast. Uh, the article is titled, What If There Was a Millennium and No One Came? And can be read by visiting vanipodcast.com forward slash tvpint67. I don't really know what the, I guess, the reason for that title is. I've I went ahead and retitled it 17 Insights on Self-Liberation and the Servile Society, so I'm not sure what their title reference is, but regardless, the content is what matters. <coughs> this was another one of those articles that I came across and thought, damn, this is one I have to republish. Uh, reason being, note the date again, August 1970. As is so often the case with these old Vanu zines, it has never rang more relevant today. And further, Sky and Natalie make some really astute and critical observations in the pursuance of self-liberation. So in this short episode of the Vani Podcast, I'll read this article for you and uh, might be back after to provide some conclu- uh, some conclusionary thoughts. Uh, we'll leave that one open-ended for now. Uh, anyway, real quick, if you haven't already, please make sure to check out TVP number 127, a special 200th episode of Vanu, a killer roundtable discussion featuring Smuggler, Max Hillebrand, Derek Burrows, Jamin Baconic, Second Penguin from the Agora Podcast, Jason Booth, and more. Uh, we got a wide variety of opinions and insights on the current state of self-liberation and the ever-increasing prospects, despite the technocratic totalitarianism swallowing up the open-air prisons known as cities. And again, I highly recommend checking that out after you wrap up this short one here, of course. Uh, you can peruse back to the latest episode of the podcast in your favorite podcatcher, uh, or just visit vanupodcast.com forward slash 127 uh, to listen or watch. Uh, there's definitely a lot to be optimistic about, definitely a lot to look forward to. And Sky Diorios and Natalie Hall surely understood that, uh, even back in the 1970s. Another couple freedom pioneers uh, with a lot of insight. Without further ado, let's get to it. Please enjoy their article, uh, What If There Is a Millennium and No One Came? Cheers. See you in the second realm. What If There Is a Millennium and No One Came? By Sky Diorios and Natalie Hall, found in Vanu Life Number 1, May 1971, condensed from Libertarian Connection, August 26th, 1970. Note, comments by Rayo are the italicized indented portions in the list noted as comments. We are born, educated, and have lived all of our lives in a society which is psychotically out of touch with reality in many respects. Do not be so naive as to think that this total immersion in the surrounding near-universally accepted fantasy world has left your unconscious mind untouched. We now know enough of laissez-faire to interpret incoming data within a rational framework. What of the years in the past that we spent filling our minds with improperly comprehended data? We are born among sheep, raised by sheep, educated as, by, and for sheep, and before we knew better, some of it got through. Conscious recognition, reevaluation, and correction of unconscious is necessary if a theoretical knowledge of laissez-faire is to lead you to actual concrete freedom rather than sterile word games. Your conscious mind will find the following statements obvious. It is very unlikely that your unconscious mind fully accepts and works with all these premises, premises, i.e. these premises have not been fully integrated into your mind. Liberate more of your mental faculties from unconsciously accepted servitude by seeing how many interesting consequences you can develop from each of the following statements. These are heuristic tools. They are useful guiding principles for self-liberation. They are not a blueprint. Play around with them enough so that you can gain an unconscious familiarity and facility in using them. Number one, the general population does not know what freedom is. Number two, the activities of the general population are not good indications of when and how you can be free and at what what cost. 
Number three, an overall decrease in freedom for the general population does not necessarily mean a decrease in freedom for you unless your actions are essentially the same as those of the general population. Comments. You can't watch most people to determine when you are free. Most people will not take advantage of freedom. This has been true in the past and will continue to be true for quite some time into the future. Regardless of the opportunities, their lives will continue as usual. Don't be conceptually blinded by paying too much attention to the general populace. Freedom's initial manifestations will be more subtle than that. Number four. A rational person is only interested in freedom he can obtain in his own time. Number five. A rational person does not count upon gaining freedom at some vague time in the future by means of sweeping social changes or other means, of which are beyond his control. Number six. Freedom is not a monolithic, indivisible entity. It is not a word. You are free when you can do what you want to do without coercive interference. Comment. Before you can decide how free you are and how to become freer, you have to determine what you want to do. What do you, not the general population, want to do? 7. Freedom is not free. It would be nice if it were, but there are people willing to coerce. Making some freedom for yourself requires purposeful action. You must know what you want to be free to do, and you must organize your resources toward the end of creating that freedom for yourself. Number 8. Your desire for freedom does not imply an effective ability to choose between 100% or 0% freedom. Your effective range of choice, that is what you can get, depends on your desired actions, your resources, and how you use them. Number 9. You will not suddenly become 100% free. You'll have to do it yourself, a carefully planned step at a time. Number 10. Your present condition of freedom is probably far from optimum for your most desired range of actions and for your present resources. Your approach to this optimum must be discovered by careful planning and investigation. You do not have automatic knowledge of this subject, and living your life like the general populace will get you what they get. Number 11. The state and its agencies will never proclaim themselves abolished, oft, impotent, or irrelevant. Number 12. There are not pigs everywhere, and they are at very few places all the time. Number 13. What the state claims to control is not the same as what it does control. You will have to investigate and decide for yourself. This is a corollary of 11 and 12. Number 14. The state will not become impotent in all geographical areas at the same time. Number 15. The state will not become impotent in all areas of human action at the same time. Number 16. You will see the effects of progressive freedom among small numbers of people and in small groups before you'll see it in large groups. And number 17. People who have gained relative freedom from state coercion for a particular range of actions will usually not loudly advertise to the minions of the state. You either have to think it up and do it yourself with your group, or you have to become skilled at reading between the lines and knowledgeable about less widely read material. But you still have to do it yourself. If you are successfully doing it, chances are that you will meet others who are successfully doing it, and you can do it better together. What's the it? That's up to you. You've just heard What If There Is A Millennium and No One Came, uh, retitled Insight, 17 Insights on Self-Liberation and the Servile Society, originally published in Vanu Life, uh, number one, May 1971, May 1971, condensed from Libertarian Connection, August 26, 1970 and uh, republished here on the Vani podcast. If you'd like to read uh, if you'd like to read this article in full um, or uh, find the full show notes, just visit vanipodcast.com forward slash TVP INT67. Vanu means relative physical and vulnerability to coercion. Vanu is a contraction of voluntary and not vulnerable. Vanu is somewhat like freedom or security, but those words mean many different things to different people. Rather than argue about what those words ought to mean, I speak of Vanu. Coercion includes murder, mayhem, slavery, robbery, rape, extortion, pollution, any physical interference with peaceful activities of another, whether by individuals or organizations. Coercion, especially institutionalized forms such as war, regimentations, and taxes, is one of the major problems of mankind. Practically all past attempts at solution have been top-down efforts to change society as a whole. 
Since the days of Babylon, there have been countless attempts to reform governments, take over governments, destroy governments, and manipulate public opinion. At most, such efforts bring temporary relief. Usually they have little effect. Often, they make matters worse. Vanu Life represents a different approach to the problem. Vanu Life does not waste space scolding government officials or proclaiming how society ought to be. Vanu Life speaks to you as an individual or small group and suggests ways you can avoid exploiting and being exploited. As you reduce the vulnerability, not only do you help yourself, indirectly you also help others by decreasing support of criminal institutions. Vanu is not necessarily only a few. Vanu will expand as there are more people willing to do. A Vanuan is a person who has achieved relative and vulnerability to coercion. There are many kinds. Some live in the wilderness, where outsiders rarely go. Others live under the earth. Others move from place to place, living in vans, campers, buses, boats, or tents. Some have been Vanu for ages, people such as gypsies, mountain men, hobos, seminoles. Others are recent refugees from the dying cities. This issue describes some of the equipment and techniques used. In future issues, I hope you'll add your knowledge to what is in here. Vanu Life. How to live and let live. Out of sight and mind of those unwilling to let live. By people who are doing it. To order your paperback copy today, just visit libertyunderattack.com forward slash Vanu Life. Again, libertyunderattack.com forward slash Vanu Life. Or to download this publication for free, visit vanupodcast.com forward slash VL.